Well, hey there, team, and welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to some more Hard Space Shipbreaker. So, we had a bit of a first look of this game and got a feel for it, and uh, if you missed it, we also did a stream for a couple of hours where we played this game in a bit of a longer form. Since it's had its big story update, they've refurbed uh, a lot of their changes. They haven't fixed the save state issue that a lot of people have. Uh, I'm not going to harp about it. We've done that ad infinitum times previous, but just be aware, if you're starting this video, you can't say between shifts. I'm going to say it on every video until you can, I, I think, because so many people ask me about it all the time. Um, I'm uh, 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 part of the way that they've restructured the work order system. Well, it doesn't really exist anymore, but this sort of experience system is that you have to really get to a milestone, a tier three milestone that has an exponential climb on points earned. Consider if you have three milestones of completing a ship in a whole buffalo fashion, the first one gives you three points. The second milestone gives you six points. The third milestone gives you 18 points. It is a very, very big hike. And unfortunately, that's probably not going to work with the way that we play on the channel. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the format we were doing similar to just before the patch dropped, which is I'm going to pick out a new hull. I'm going to do two shifts on it, and we're just going to do the best we can so you get a bit of a 30-minute video experience so the episodes can continue. Unfortunately, sadly, I'm only going to probably get to the second milestone. I guess, hey, from a viewership perspective, that means I've got more videos to grind through to get to the end. But I thought I'd just sort of lay it out at the beginning because I think that's the only real reasonable way for me to still package up 30-minute videos for you to consume. And here we go with another bloody 200, I suppose. All right, so um, we'll check the equipment, uh, repairs. I think we, we tend to repair at 70%. That's what we used to do at least. Um, as far as the certification, the grind seems very slow. Um, which I'm not necessarily against. Look, if the game's good, the game's good. Who gives a shit if the grind is really, really slow? Uh, we've got these new ships unlocked. Actually, you know what? Like I said, there's a chance that people have missed the longer live stream. Um, we did have a look at the new mackerel hull, the Exolab, I suppose it's called. So I think what we'll do is, for the sake of this being one of the first newer episodes, packaging the game up in a sort of 30 minute, well, it's probably gonna be a bit longer with this rant at the front, Let's have a look at the new mackerel, the Exolab. So you can see here that we're picking by tier level. We did actually go back, if you go and check the stream, we went back and we had a look at the way that uh, the tutorial works. We actually started again from scratch. It's very long um, and there is some audio log. Uh, to be perfectly honest, if you're restarting like me, you've played a lot of this game, I would skip the tutorial. Skip the tutorial is a very long grind and a lot of people are getting miffed about being so depowered, there's a big grind that you can skip uh, at the beginning. Obviously, if you don't know anything about the game, you've got to do the tutorial, but I'd say skip it if you were restarting. Anyway, let's get in and uh, give this bloody Exolab thing a bit of a burl. I know I'm tutorializing a little bit, but it's sort of like on this episode, this is on the back of me playing a fair few hours of this, I can give a bit more of a broad idea of how this... Uh, how this uh, game now works in its current state, given the huge overhaul. Okay, cool. So you can see, like, even the UI's changed. Our shift time is on the right side. It's very small in that. The UI is quite clean. I like it a lot, to be honest. You can see we're moving a lot slower. One of the things that miffs me a little bit is the oxygen counter down the bottom. It's represented by a bar. It's sort of... I guess maybe it creates a heightened sense of urgency because you don't have an actual second-by-second -second timer. But uh, regardless, it's still a little bit frustrating. So we're on these early hulls. Um, we don't have any sexy equipment like, uh, you know, like nuclear cores or anything like that. Um, the ships seem to start in a sort of uh, depressurized state. The doors are, well, are they open or are they blown off? I don't think we can actually, no, we can't actually cycle. So, and I think that's because we're still in a pseudo-tutorial state, even though I think technically we've passed the skippable tutorial. So, the way that it stands at the moment is you can see at the top centre, and we have a progress bar. And that progress bar is, uh, well, I mean, it's exactly that. It, we, there was something similar in the previous game, and it's sort of, what it represents is a value, um, a value obtained versus a value destroyed slash lost. You can see 
On the left of the bar, we've got a little bit of a yellow progress bar already. And you can see it just ticked up when I harvested that thing to the barge. What is this? This goes to the barge as well? Oh, the whole thing comes off. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, it's interesting. Wasn't this the Exolab thing? And yet it doesn't have any of the wing leg things on the side. Not really. Interesting. Anyway, so the idea is that you just chip away. Um, and look, I've never really been a big fan of the whole Buffalo experience. I enjoyed cherry picking work orders. But I will, I've said it previously, and I'll keep saying it, I'm a bit of a convert. I actually kind of really dig th this way that they approach the, the whole Buffalo sort of situation, right? They've, they've done a pretty clever way of allowing people to either pick and choose and cherry pick high value items, which like, for example, I just dumped a whole bunch of very valuable stuff without ever touching the skin, and we've nearly hit the first milestone. But you still do need to salvage a lot of the ship, ship, uh, ship, sorry. So even though I do commend the devs for kind of coming up with a clever way to sort of straddle the two uh, play styles, being that, you know, you've got whole buffalo and you've got... Jeez, what's wrong with my gun? It's so crap. Um, yeah, sort of straddling the the two's play styles. It definitely does lean more whole buffalo. And as we said, if you're wanting to get all three uh, milestones for your LT points, you're probably going to find yourself wanting to... Um... Wait, did that not come off? You're probably going to find yourself wanting to do it all in like one shift. Wait, so why did I have that? That's a cut point? Oh, that's weird, isn't it? It's a bit strange, isn't it? Oh well. So it goes. Um, what I will actually do is probably cherry pick a little bit more and more as I play to see if I can actually get away with hitting, especially if I'm going to only play at two shifts. Probably said something to be said for me trying to get all these sexy bits and pieces. You know what I mean? How are we going to do this? Oh, there it is there. Okay. Didn't it? Yeah, it dropped away a little bit. There we go. But yeah, look, uh, you know, th there are some criticisms to be weighed, for sure. Um, but for the most part, like I said, I, I, I really enjoy what they've done with this patch, with this update. Um, we had some interesting discussions around the idea that the story is told by sort of forced and pe people use the description it feels forced these dialogues that you sort of have to listen to in audio logs you can't skip them i've talked about it a lot on stream i don't really want to you know go over it again but um but i think there's a fair argument to be made for you know if you can skip cut scenes why can't you skip these audio logs some people just want to cut ships that's a good point that's a good position um but uh you know who knows? That's all I can really say on the topic. Let's continue cutting these bits and pieces out. But uh, it does feel kind of fresh. I'd be curious, though, from the... Because uh, there are some hardcore people that know life this game. You can be offended if you want. That's your prerogative. But if you play this game for 12 hours a day, you're a no-lifer. Uh, and that's fine. I'm glad. In a way, I'm jealous that you found a game that you can no-life. But I'm curious for the dudes that already whole buffaloed this game a whole lot. Do you get as much from this patch as, say, I do? Because I kind of find it almost fresh the way that uh, whole buffalo is being, you know, encouraged. Well, anyway, let's finish this cut and we'll go get some oxygen. Because my point is, like, sort of on an inversely, conversely. Hmm. Gotta have to think about that. But ultimately, I could actually, I could see if, uh, if someone, yeah, I can see if someone was already pretty keen on the whole buffalo, maybe they find this update a bit lacking? I don't know. I'd be curious. I'm sure you, you I'm sure you guys are just dying to tell me what you think. Uh, oxygen. Let's get some more tethers. Fuel's about halfway. I think that'll be all right.
This should be interesting. Um, and uh, the, the previously mentioned issue, which is to say... Um, having to sort of sit in one sitting to do the ship to get the three-star thing or the three-tier thing. I wonder how uh, exacerbated that problem becomes when you're dealing with a bloody gecko hull or something. This is only... Oh, that's not where you're supposed to go. Oops. Come back, baby, come back. No, he's gone. He's gone. <laughs> My bad, team. It's almost like it's difficult uh, to be, you know, playing the game and talking shit at the same time. I do my best. Um, yeah, so I have to wonder with the larger hulls and the javelins as well, because they are definitely much larger and, and more complex again than the gecko. This game is this mode where you got you can see, because I threw that thing in the wrong hole, I've got a little bit of red on my tracking bar. Um, so it'd be easy to accidentally lock out the third star if you constantly salvage shit in the wrong direction. So I have to wonder, like, you have to be really... I feel like the javelins might... Like, geckos are large, but the javelins are fiddly. They've got a lot of little different parts, and I feel like the sort of... The penalty for dumping or damaging the wrong stuff in the wrong hole um, could be actually quite catastrophic on a javelin. Like, I could see someone sitting here doing a whole bunch of shifts for two hours, but at, at, at two hours and five minutes, they accidentally break something on the ship and then they delete the third milestone. And I wonder, like anyone that's ever played a game for two hours and then had their progress deleted uh, because of a mistake, um, that's a really good way to make someone want to rage uninstall the entire game. Again, I'm speculating because I'm not up to those hulls yet, but I, I find it interesting. Um, oh, oh, shit, we're sparking. That's not good. Fuck, I hate, I hate them. I hate junction boxes. They're like the most explosive things on the planet. There we go. We hit the first things. First thing there. So it'll be interesting. And I guess the sort of extra point I was moving towards is like, I mean, look at the writing on the wall. We went from mackerel into gecko into javelin. Presumably they're not done and the ships are only going to get bigger. And I feel like they might find themselves in a catch-22 sort of lose-lose situation because say they're not ever going to make a ship bigger than the javelin. If you ever told your player base that, I think you'll piss a lot of people off. I think a lot of people are expecting much bigger ships, right? So there's one side of it. They kind of, in a way, I feel like the community expects them to make bigger ships than the Javelin. But the way that this sort of save system and having to sit still works, for better or for worse, I've had people tell me it takes them two hours to do a javelin. How long is it going to take them to do the next big sexy shit? Three hours? At what point is it unreasonable to have a player try and do the whole thing in one sitting? I don't know. But this is all just speculatory. You know, I'm sort of just raising interesting points that have come up with my community. Um, now, where is that supposed to go? Venus. I like how the lights all turn off when you take the power out. Look at that, that was worth a lot. Yeah, so I just dumped the cockpit in. And now that is one thing, I'm no speedrunner. I have zero time for the speedrunners, but that's ancient history to be perfectly honest. Right, you know what, maybe I'll give them a second chance. But there's something to be said about being efficient and trying to move through it fast. And things like dumping that cockpit once I stripped all those parts out and then taking that much red against my progress. You can see up there on the far right of my progress bar. I think there's something to be said about maybe even just tactically dumping entire chunks of the ship because you can take the L, right? There's not a lot of margin for error. We, we kind of did explore that. The, you, you do have to salvage almost the whole ship in some cases. And I think it would be kind of actually cool figuring out how much of the ship you can just dump in the wrong hole to see... Um, to, to get the three stars as sort of efficiently as possible. So not quite what I would call, you know, speed running, but... Um, sort of, uh, what is it? Because it's an unusual sort of mechanic, for sure. 
sort of like trying to come up with the... Um, sorry, I'm making myself dizzy. I'm trying to come up with some sort of uh, efficient harvesting... Uh, because it doesn't have to be maximal. It doesn't have to be like these uh, people that are obsessed with um, whole buffaloing every single inch. It's more like... If you will, if you even look at the nubs at the top, it's more like getting 80% of the salvage, right? And you could potentially get, you know, a distribution of that 80% more efficiently if you dumpster a certain 20% of it. And so it'd be cool. It's not necessarily about trying to get as much of the 100% as possible. It's about trying to get to that three tag at the top as close as possible um, and wasting whatever you need to waste along the way to do it as efficiently as possible. So it's a cool, it's, it's still an efficiency problem to be solved. And when I mean problem, I mean as in, in the gameplay loop, not a problem with the game, as in the player's loop that they need to solve. There's an efficiency loop, but it's a really different balance focused around getting like 80% of the job done as efficiently as possible. Anyway, I find that exceedingly fascinating, especially as I speak about it more and more out loud, right? It sounds kind of cool. What's going on here? Oh, right. It's because of... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. It's because the whole thing is attached with cable. And the cable is a small blessing. Th that's a great example. These new cables, which are really cool, and they do seem to actually transmit power. I always wondered about that, if they were going to do some space engineers where it just magically transmits through the walls or something like that. I love that these cables are here, but they're also, look, it's five kilos of shit that goes in the furnace. It's worth absolutely nothing. And so there's there's big value to using it more as a, like, almost like as a, well, not a gantry, but like almost like rebar in a way, like a supporting structure to hold this side of the ship together so we can go and do this, right? So we can go and just pull the whole thing out and keep it together. So the value of that furnace cable is not actually in its value to dumpster in the... to put in the furnace. Its value exists to keep this thing as an, a sort of contig contiguous piece, I suppose. Are low. Look at that, it's pulling my whole ship away. And I find that really fascinating, and I would love to see what we come up with and what the community comes up with uh, around, like, efficient ways to use parts to keep the ship together and sacrifice them. Not quite a sacrificial anode, but, like... Uh, a piece that keeps it together and makes you more efficient. Look at that! We got uh, we got two stars after all. We are getting a bit faster, I suppose. There we go. One shift down. We'll uh, we'll back to back it really quick with another one. Certification review. So we've leveled up from just doing stuff. But you can see this is how you get your LT to buy your uh, upgrades. And this is the sort of thing. Now, I can understand from a cursory sort of level that going 6, 12, and 30 seems like a great way to incentivize people to stay on to the third tag. But um, it is a little bit egregious. If someone only has a time to do one, um, one shift, for example, so they only get the 6 and the 12, they miss the 30, you're sort of doubling their required grind just because they have they don't have the time to sit in one sitting. It's a definitely a doozy. It's an interesting problem to have. Um, uh, it looks like we're going to get through this one fairly quick, but we were having a hard time with some of the other models, and I think how much of that is going to be affected by the the amount of uh, actual goodies inside the hull, you know? What's this? A javelin? Oh, are th there are smaller javelins, aren't there? Yeah, I think there there was a smaller scale javelin, right? Interesting. Equipment, let's go. Yeah, here we go. My grapple sort of broke down, so we'll repair that. 11 repair kits, that's excessive. Let's see if we can buy anything. Oh, look at this. We can buy the stinger range. Yeah, that'll do. Whatever. 
Like, I, I don't I don't care, to be honest. We'll buy everything eventually. But we'll finally upgrade, unlock some upgrades. And we've probably been playing this game for a good couple of hours, you know, from start to finish now. So you can use that as a sort of high watermark. I tend to stop and rant during my videos, but just to give you a bit of an idea of what, what sort of grind you're in for before you even buy your first upgrades. Stickers, messages, we don't give a shit about any of that nonsense. Um, let's... Oh, what's going on here? It's... I, okay, we had this happen earlier. This is a training shift, I think. Oh, okay, so it's a reactor thing. Cool. So... I suppose that's worth noting. I, I'm not miffed or anything, but they will delete your hull to replace it for the tutorial. Moving from his plate begins to react out. It is imperative that you just deposit it quickly. Yep. This is exciting. I wasn't expecting a reactor pull. Yeah, right. Alright, this one's pretty easy. Should just slide out of her coolant casing with a good yank from your grapple. Try to have your... I like the little UI element with the uh, status there down the bottom. Alright. Not that it really matters. But, uh... I'm guessing, you know... They're probably going to take this hull off us anyway. Off you go, big fella. Nice. Oh, look how much of a, a tag that we got for that. That's cool. Very high value. Okay, cool. Well, that's right. We'll persevere for this ship shift for the moment. Wasn't exactly the best laid plan and all that sort of thing, but whatever. So, like, at the end of the day, I guess as long as as long as you enjoy playing the game and the loop is solid, then, you know, it's only a dude with a really boring life that's going to really bang the drum about these changes or the save state. Uh, I, I find it an interesting conversation just because it's kind of unusual for a game not to have some sort of... With, with a game that's all about progression... To not have a save state in it is kind of it's it's something to talk about around the table with the boys on the beers, right? It's interesting because it's unusual. Uh, I think it's well. Again, I'm not necessarily trying to open it up, but um, it's definitely it's definitely interesting. We can say that much. But this new method, this pseudo whole buffalo pick and choose, take the bits out that you want. I kind of really like it. Um. And for the most part, I'm getting away with not having to be some... Like, it, it isn't making me get every single last piece, so I don't have to be a sad boy that um that harvests the entire skin of the ship. Because as soon as you got me doing that, I'm not interested. I would rather mow my lawn, you know? Because that is about the equivalent of uh, whole buffaloing all of the skin off of a ship, you know? But the fact that it, the fact that it keeps it on 80% sort of thing... So is that you can you can pick and choose how to extract your value. It still gives the player agency, uh, which I kind of I very much like. I guess actually that's interesting to say it out loud. As much as there is something to be said about the nuance required of of you know pulling something apart as whole buffalo, and you can work out your idiosyncratic issues by doing that your OCD even, um, it's still the same end result if you're just going to hull buffalo the whole bloody thing every single time. Whereas, um, yeah, like I said, I'm harping about the sort of 80% progress. It looks like the third milestone's further along on this one, actually. But I, I kind of think that nuance of the fact that it doesn't want us to do 100% and it doesn't want us to do 90%, it kind of wants us to do 80% or so, I think that is actually kind of magic. That is what's going to keep this game interesting. Alright, where was I? Salvage secured. Account credit 
So I can grab those repair kits, can't I? Nice. Right, and that's fuel, of which we have a shitload. Alright. I'm very curious to see because we're obviously getting a lot of hulls that are depressurized. Um, how much of that is because they're drip feeding us tutorials? I mean, they only just showed us what a reactor was like and how to do that a couple of hours in. Interesting. Um, but uh, like, uh, is it only that they're depressurized because we're still in that learning environment? Or is it because we're going to actually have depressurized or damaged hulls? That's interesting. You know? Salvage deposit accepted. Credit transferred. Let's scrap that. Salvage secured. Now, does this have cabling? It does not, not this time, so a little bit more fiddly, but so it goes. Warning, tethers depleted. Oh. No good, let's go get some new tethers. Do 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 do. Actually, you know what? Um, how long have we got left in the ship? Yeah. Look, to be honest, between the sort of intro rant laying out how the format's going to be going forth, you know, I, I sort of took some more time between shifts to sort of break down how we're doing this. I'm, I'm not necessarily against maybe just wrapping up there because we're pretty good for time. Um, you know, that's that's not bad progress. We've got our points. And um, and I guess there it is, you know? Here's this bloody shield. Just wanted to say, I'm impressed with how quick you're picking things up. Not sure what kind of work you've done before, but you're a natural cutter. So, I yeah, noticed, I, I can't skip that, which is a bit of a shame, but uh, like I said, I'm not necessarily saying I, I'm trying to poo-poo the story or avoid or anything like that, but I, I think the, the player should have the agency to pause or skip audio logs. What can I say? So I'm just going to talk over this Sheila at the end. Anyway, like I said, it's got it's got a few issues with it for sure, but this isn't a burning dumpster fire of a patch. Not at all. There's some really good stuff that's been added in, and I'm really enjoying it, and I'm glad you guys are too. Let me know what you like. Make sure you check out the streams that we're doing, because we might because we record these live during a stream as well. I might even do hard space streams um let us know if you want to see more episodes of this and you want me to do another bloody 200 episodes of hard space maybe you've lost interest maybe you're not interested anymore but uh, i'd be curious to hear what you have to say team we might just leave it there for the time being and i'll catch you guys on the next one